What's going on guys and welcome back to the Hammer Dance YouTube channel. Today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit uh, about microphones. I'm getting a lot of questions, uh, comments on old videos and things like that about which microphones are the best to use uh, for streaming. And uh, the, the plain answer here is that there is no one size fits all, right? Different types of microphones are going to be more beneficial to different types of people. Whatever your setup is, is going to determine what the best microphone would be for you. So real quick guys, before we jump into that, let's give a shout out and thank you to our sponsor for today's video, Own.TV. Own.TV is the place to go guys if you're looking for some fresh new graphics for your stream. Whether you're on Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook gaming, you'll find something that's a perfect fit for your channel. They offer full themed overlay packages, which are great if you're trying to give your stream a complete makeover. But let's say you're just looking to pick up some new alert graphics. Don't worry, because they've got you covered there too. You could find single graphics such as alerts, banners, panels, and logos as well. And one of the best parts about most of these overlays is that they are completely modular. So if you and your friends all pick up the same overlay, such as this Rodan one right here, you can change the colors and tweak it to match your brand and none of you will have the exact same overlay. If you guys are looking to take your stream to the next level, be sure to check out own.tv using my link below to support the channel. All right guys, so we're back and let's start talking about this, right? So the microphone that I'm using here, the Shure SM7B is a dynamic microphone, right? It requires a lot of power to use. Luckily, I'm using a Go XLR, um, so I'm able to power it with just that. If you were using like a Focusrite or some kind of audio interface, that's not the Go XLR. You may need to use a cloud lifter, which will give the microphone enough power um, so that you can actually hear it. Because if you use it without that, um, you will actually realize that it's extremely quiet, right? So this microphone in particular requires a lot of power, uh, requires a lot to pick up your voice. Now, the upside to that is that it sounds great. Um, it, it's very, very clear. You get that nice, deep, full-bodied sound that you would get from like a, a radio station, like a talk show host, anything like that. Uh, so that's why it's a pretty popular microphone. However, I would not say that this microphone or dynamic microphones in general are the best for everybody, right? It's okay for me because I can be right on top of it. I have a lot of room. Uh, I have it on, mounted on the boom arm here. I have a lot of screens. It's not really in the way for me, but this microphone can very easily get in the way for a lot of people's uh, setups, right? Like you have to realize that with this microphone, um, for it to sound good, I kind of need to be like right on top of the microphone. I need to have it between one to four inches from my mouth. Um, so like depending on your setup, where your display is, it could be in the way uh, when you're trying to game and things like that. Um, so realistically, this microphone is very popular among streamers. I'm sure you see it all over Twitch or YouTube, uh, wherever you're watching. But what it comes down to is this microphone was definitely designed more for broadcasting audio, uh, like, you know, radio stations or even podcasts where it doesn't really matter. You don't have a screen in front of you um, because I'm a huge advocate of this microphone. But I can honestly admit that there is a lot of times where this microphone feels like it's in my way while I'm gaming. Uh, you know, it's kind of blocking my keyboard. Not that I have to really look down to type, but... Um, it is in the way, it is big, it's chunky microphone, sounds great, and I love it, um, but there are other options out there. One more plus side, though, to using a dynamic microphone like this here, and, you know, just so you guys know, this isn't the only dynamic microphone. There are tons of them on the market now uh, geared towards streamers that are maybe a little bit smaller, don't require as much power to power them, uh, but one huge plus to them is that if you are in a noisy environment, right, let's say you have, you know, your your kids are in the other room or you just live in a house with a bunch of roommates and, and it's constantly very, very noisy. Um, these microphones, dynamic microphones have way, way, way lower sensitivity uh, than condenser microphones. Um, so it'll help if you're in a noisy environment um, to kind of cancel out that background noise and you will, you know, be able to just focus on just your voice. That's a huge plus uh, for this type of microphone. So let's talk a little bit more about condenser microphones, right? So here I have uh, Rode NT Mini right here that I was using for a while. I use it on my other PC. That's a condenser microphone. Um, you don't even need to use XLR input with that. You can plug it directly into USB. Uh, we have shotgun mics like I have on my camera right here, the Rode uh, shotgun mic. That's another type of condenser microphone. So the condenser microphones will be a lot more sensitive, right? So let's say you're gaming and you wanted to put your microphone up here, probably a little bit different right now. You can't hear me as well because I'm not right on top of the microphone, but if you're gaming and you wanted to have it out of your vision, right? You're not blocking your screen at all. 
I would be using a condenser microphone um, simply because, like I said, they're way, way more sensitive. You can pick up sound a lot easier. They still sound just as good. Um, it's a little bit more of a flat frequency response when it comes to condenser microphones. It's not as uh, full, not as full bodied. They sound great, they're crystal clear, um, but you will do, you know, if you want to get that like deep sound, the, the, the boomy sound that you get from this microphone, you will have to do some EQing, which is simple. You can just EQ at one time with an OBS or Streamlabs OBS, and it'll just stay that way, right? So mess around with it, get it, get it to the sound that you want, you know, um, and then it will just be that way. Um, so like, yeah, like I said, I mean, a huge plus to condenser microphones is that you can have it a little bit further away from you, right? And uh, shotgun microphones, for example, this one right here, if I was using a shotgun mic and let's say I mounted it on top of my display like that, completely out of my vision, um, that's another good one uh, because it's super directional audio pickup. So basically if we point that microphone at my face, um, it will pick up audio. I could step back here and it would still pick up the audio. Um, so, you know, there's, there's some pros and cons to all these different types of microphones. So I'm trying to give you guys a good roundabout feeling of each of them this way you can make you know your decision uh based on your environment and your needs now one thing i would take into consideration with condenser microphones is they can have some internal noise since they're so sensitive uh you may get some hissing and things like that you can negate it with some noise reduction and things like that but just be aware that if you do get that it is pretty common with condenser microphones i've dealt with it a lot in the past uh you can just eq it out uh, you know like with a noise uh, reduction filter anything like that you can get it out um, and one more thing that you would want to be a little bit cautious of when using a condenser microphone is if you care about um, keystrokes, right? Like let's say you're streaming on Twitch and you're slapping your keys really hard, you're playing League of Legends or something crazy where you're just spamming buttons. People most likely will be able to hear your keystrokes, but again, you can use a noise gate to kind of cancel that out, find the sweet spot uh, for where like when you're talking, your microphone activates and people can hear you nice and clear, but when you're pressing your keys, um, they won't hear it unless you're slapping down on them super, super hard. Um, but for the most part, you can, you can fix all that. I use condenser microphones for like the past 10 years uh last two years maybe recently is when i got this and i've been using it ever since um i love it i absolutely love using a dynamic microphone i love the sound that it gives my voice it fits me very well um and you know what it comes down to is any microphone um you know i've done tests and there are microphones that are less than a hundred dollars that can come pretty close to the quality of this microphone, which is $400. Uh, so as far as price point goes, I wouldn't worry about that. You can kind of tweak any microphone to sound good with your voice. So don't go, you know, breaking your piggy bank to get this microphone or, or another $400, $500 microphone. I mean, you could spend thousands on a microphone. Um, but what it comes down to is, you know, you're streaming, right? If you're playing games um, and things like that, it's important to have good quality. I'm a huge advocate of good audio, um, but don't go crazy, right? Just pick the microphone that best fits your scenario. Like I said, if you're in a noisy environment, a noisy house with kids running around or, um, you know, roommates that are constantly cooking, you know, 10 feet from your room, wherever you're streaming, you may want to consider getting a dynamic microphone. Um, I'll link some dynamic mics down below here and some condenser mics, um, but, you know, if you're someone who's playing games more competitively and you really want to have full vision of your screen, you want nothing in your way, you know, sometimes when I'm playing and I'm typing and I go to move my hand, boom, I hit my microphone, it turns, I gotta move it while I'm playing. This is a very large microphone. Like I said, perfect microphone for podcasting and things like that, uh, or streaming very chill games and stuff, but I personally wouldn't suggest this microphone to people who are just trying to play games uh, competitively um, simply because it's a lot to have in your way. It takes a lot to power. You either need a Go XLR, you're going to need a cloud lifter with like a Focusrite audio interface um, just to get it up to par. Um, and I'm running this thing on 69 dB of gain right now. Uh, so it takes a lot of power to get it sounding perfect. It took a lot of tweaking to get it to sound how I want it to sound. Whereas something like this, the Rode NT USB Mini. I think this microphone is like 90 bucks on Amazon. Um, I'll link it down below. Uh, you don't even need an audio interface for it. You can plug it directly into USB and it has pretty insane quality for what it is. A hundred dollar microphone, it sounds beautiful. You can EQ it uh, to give yourself a little bit more of that low end, deep, 
presence in your voice. Um, but yeah, guys, so if you want something that can be out of your way, right, completely out of your way, nice picks up sound from a good distance away, go with a condenser mic. You can even try, like I said, a shotgun mic. They make shotgun mics that you can plug directly into an audio interface. They don't need to be on a camera. Um, and you can mount that on top of your monitor, pointed directly at your face. You can do something like that. But it really comes down to your setup. Um, one more thing I would like to say, a difference between dynamic and condenser microphones is the durability of them. Uh, dynamic microphones tend to be a little bit more durable. You can kind of bang them around and move them around a lot um, and they stay fine. Condenser microphones are a little bit more sensitive. Yeah, as far as it goes here, the, the sensitivity is the main thing. If you want something where you have to be right on top of it, get a dynamic microphone. If you want something where you can kind of sit back and game, have your microphone maybe up here, uh, kind of just picking up you know, it'll definitely pick up more room sounds, uh, but you can always use noise gates and things like that to cancel out any audio that you don't want to have. Um, but yeah, guys, so I hope this helped you out a little bit. I will link some microphones down in the description below this video. Um, but yeah, I've been getting a lot of questions on this, so I kind of wanted to go over it, make a video for you guys and answer some of your questions. Um, if you want to ask me any questions directly, you can always hit me up on Twitter at Hammerdance Live or comment right here in this video. Um, and I'll do my best to answer everybody. Sometimes it's hard to answer every single comment, but just ask and I will try my best to answer. But yeah, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, helps me out a lot with the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and turn on those post notifications so you don't miss the next time I post a video. And as always, I stream on Twitch Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern time at Hammerdance. I will link that down below as well. But anyways, guys, that's all from me. I want you to keep those hammers up and I'll see you next time.